Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we are continuing uh, solving combinatorics problems. Um, as usual, I encourage you to go straight to the unizor.com website where this lecture is uh, presented with notes and solutions. Um, now, in the notes, I not only specify the problem itself, but also I first write the answer. So, it's it would be great if you can just try to solve your problem, this problem yourself, and then check it against the answer which I, which I have there. Um, and well, if it's you know the same answer, that's great. Um, then you can just either read the notes where my logic is explained, or listen to the lecture, or or, or both. But what's very important is to do it, at least to try to do it yourself first. All right, so. That's my usual encouragement for all the problems. Try to do it yourself, because that's the only purpose. You have to do it um, yourself. Now, I'm explaining, um, for, for one purpose, as far as I understand, the more problems, even if you don't solve it yourself, but you try, and the more problems I, I explain the solutions, the better chances are that all this methodology can be used by you for new problems. Right, so that's what we are doing. Now, today problems, four problems, let me just start one by one. Okay, number one we have, okay, we have two n different objects. And we would like to break them into n pairs. So question is, how many different ways um, are there uh, to, to, to break these two n uh, objects into n pairs? And uh, I do not differentiate the pairs like object A and object B. This is the same pair as B and A. So pair is not ordered pair. It's just a pair, right? So question is, how many times, um, how many different ways of uh, dividing these two n elements to n objects into n pairs. Now, let's think about it this way. If I will put all these two n elements into one row in some sequence, in some order, and then I just separate them into pairs by basically having number one and number two, this is the one pair, Number three and four is another pair, four and five, third pair, etc., etc. Now, well, obviously, we, we do have some kind of um, distribution of my two n objects into pairs. Now, if I will permute all these um, objects in this particular order and, and put it in some other order, I will definitely have different distribution. Well, but is it really different? If I will have a permutation where only these two objects, for instance, are exchanged places, then I basically have exactly the same distribution of my two n objects into pairs, right? So somehow I have to account that not all permutations of two n objects produce different distributions. And by the way, there are two n factorial of these uh, different permutations, as we know, right? So some of them are really producing exactly the same distribution of pairs. Now, which ones? Well, all the permutations where I can change these two places, and this is two, number one, number two, or number two, number one. Now, with each of them, I can have these in different order and it still is the same um, distribution by pairs. So it's another two, and then another two. And how many pairs are there? Well, that's how many times I have to multiply by two, right? Well, sorry, not multiply, divide, obviously. And this is two to the power of n. Now, I'm dividing because I'm reducing the number of um, different distributions of my two n objects into n pairs. So that's why I have to divide it by two. 
if I take into consideration that I can reverse this order, I can reverse this order, etc. And there are n different pairs, so n different times I have to multiply 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 to factor down my total number of distributions. So that's the answer. Okay, next. <coughs> next is I have three points A, B, and C on the plane. Now, through point A, I have x different lines. Through point B, I have y different lines. And through point C, I have z straight lines. Now, let's assume that there are no parallel lines among all these x plus, y, x plus y plus z lines, there are no parallel lines. And let's also assume that uh, if you consider the intersections between the lines, no point exists, well, except these, a, b, and c, of course, no point exists where three lines are intersecting in the same point, right? So if I have any two lines outside of these a, b, and c, they intersect uh, because they're not parallel, as I said. And the point of intersection is the point of intersection of only these two lines and none other. All right? So now, question is, how many triangles are formed by these particular lines? Okay? So that's the question. Now, let's think about how these triangles can be formed. Well, one way to form these triangles is to have one line from each group, one from X, one from Y, and one from Z. And obviously, these three lines form a triangle because none of the lines are parallel, right? So, how many choices do I have if I would like to count only triangles built from the lines belonging to three different groups? Well, obviously, x choices for the first line, times y choices for the second line, and times z choices for the third line. So, if I'm counting only triangles built from all different uh, groups, it's x times y times z right so that's the number of triangles which are built from lines belonging to different groups but it can be slightly different i can have two lines of one particular uh, group and one of the lines of two other groups and that's also a triangle right because these two are not parallel and one of these one of these or one of these they're also non-parallel and obviously they will form a triangle. Now, there are three actually different ways. I can take two uh, lines from group A and then any of these, any one of these and any one of these. Uh, I can have two of these and any one of these two. Or I can have two of these and any one of these. So, what is the total number of such triangles. Well, let's just consider how many choices of a pair of lines here I have. Well, if all together I have x different lines and I need to pick two, that's c number of combinations from x by 2. Now, so I have a pair. Now, this pair can be combined with either these or these. One line out of these and how many of these are? y plus z, right? So I have to multiply it by y plus z. So that's the number of li uh, triangles formed by a pair of here and one of these. Now I have to add to this, obviously, similarly, a pair of these, which is c of y by 2, 
times sum of these two, z plus x plus, uh, I can take number of combinations of uh, two lines out of z and one of these, which is x plus y. So if I will sum up all these and this, that's the total number of triangles which can be formed by all these lines. That's it. Now, by the way, I did not mention it before, but if you come up with some different logic, different way to come up with the same number, uh, by all means, send it to me and uh, I will put it on, on the web with reference to your name if you want to. All right, next. All right, I have six digits. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, out of these six digits, I form different numbers and the condition is that the number should contain all these six. So there are no two identical digits. So which numbers I can put? Well, 123,456 or 234,561 or 156,234, etc. These are all the numbers which contain just exactly these six digits in some order. Well, what I would like to know is, I would like to have a sum of all these numbers. And there are a lot of them, right? Well, it's an interesting task and the uh, well, question is how to approach it. Here's what I suggest. First of all, how many numbers exist? Well, obviously it's the number of permutations of six objects, right? Which is 6 factorial, which is 720. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, 24 times 5, 120, and times 6. Okay, fine. Okay, so I have a column of numbers, uh, and the column contains 720 lines, and I have to summarize them together. Well, let's continue. <coughs> Let's continue each individual uh, small column of width 1. Well, I have number 6, I have number 1, I have number 4, I have some other numbers, right? Well, the total number of numbers is 720, obviously. Now, how many of them are 6? How many of them are 1? How many of them are 4? Well, obviously, each digit is supposed to be repeated exactly the same number of times as the other digit, right? So I have six digits, different digits, and I have 720 rows, which means that every digit occurs in, in 120 different lines. So I have 120 times six repeated number here, 120 times 1, 120 times 4, and 120 times and 2, and 3, and, and, and 5, or whatever else, right? So that would make my total number of digits exactly the same for each digit, and each, dig each digit appears 120 times. So, if I will just summarize one column, the very last column, I will have 1, 120 times plus 2, 120 times plus 3, 120 times plus 4, 120, plus 5, 120, and plus 6, 120, which is the same thing as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 times 120. So that's the number if, uh, which, which I can get if I will summarize all the digits in the first column. Now, whatever that number is, and I, by the way, I did calculate it uh, in the notes for this lecture at unisor.com. You can check what this number actually is. Now, whatever this number is, let me call it P. 
doesn't really matter. You can just calculate it. Because this sum is what? Uh, 3, 6, uh, 10, 21, right? So it's 21 times 1, 20, whatever it is. So let's call it P. Now, what will be if I will summarize the digits of the second column? Well, it will be exactly the same number, P, right? However, what's interesting is that this particular, the, the, per, the first digit has a weight 1 in, in the uh, positioning, decimal positioning system. The second digit has the weight 10. The third has the widget 100, 1000, 10,000, and 100,000. So if I want to summarize everything, I have to not just summarize each column separately. I have to each column uh, separately, the sum of digits of each column separately, which is this number, I have to multiply by its weight, right? So the total sum of all these would be P times 1, which is the weight of 1, plus P times 10, plus P times 100, plus P times uh, 10, uh, P times 1000, plus P times 10,000, plus p times 100,000, right? Which is equal to p times 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's what it is, right? If I will summarize 1 plus 10 plus 100 plus 1,000 plus 10,000 plus 100,000, that's what I will get. So if I will multiply 21 by 120, which is p, and then I will multiply p by 111,111, that would be my answer. Whatever that answer is, and again, it's listed on the unisor.com in the notes for this lecture. All right, such a, well, difficult task, but we conquered it. Now, if somebody wants to, and if somebody can program the computer, you can just do what I did to verify my answer. I just wrote a small program in C++ language and uh, basically did this loop of summarizing all these uh, six-digit numbers and I got exactly the same number. Just a confirmation. I was curious, you know. All right, um, next. Um, <clears throat> the task is to find out how many divisors a number has. Like, let's say, take the number six. Well, it has a divisor, and by the way, as a divisor, I would like to include number one, just for simplicity. So divisors are one, two, three, and six. So we have six divisors, right? Now, how can I calculate for any given number how many divisors it has? Well, first of all, what's very important is to represent the number as a... Uh, uh, product of prime numbers. I mean, that's, that, that's the essence of um, calculating the number of divisors. Like, for instance, 6 is equal to 2 times 3. These are two prime numbers. So, let's just think about it. Number 2 can be either absent or present with a power of 1, right? So, it can be either uh, two times uh, two uh, 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 in, 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 uh, the power of zero, or two to the power of one, and three also can be either in the power of zero or three can be in the power of one. So we have four different variations. Now two uh, to the zeros and three to the zeros together they give one. Two to the zeros and three to the first give three. Two to the first, three to the zeros gives two and 2 to the first and 3 to the first gives this. Now, what if you have a little more complex case? Let's take 12. Again, 1, 2, 3, now 4 is also a divisor, and 6 is a divisor, and 12, right? So we have uh, 6 different divisors, right? So how can we obtain this? from the number 12, if I will represent 12 as 2 times 2 times 3. These are prime numbers, right? Or a little bit shorter, 2 square times 3. Well, let's just think. Again, 
if this is the representation of the whole number, then I can have 2 in either 0 or first or the second power, right? And 3 I can have with either 0 or first power. Well, let's combine these three choices and these two choices and we can have all the combinations and we will have exactly six. Three times two is exactly six number of choices. This and this gives me one. This and this, two and three, two, uh, gives me this. This and this give me this. What else? This and this gives me this. Uh, this and this gives me this, and this times this gives me this. All right, so I have obviously all the choices. So here is the general uh, explanation of the problem which I have at hand. Let's consider you have some number, oops, which is represented as a product of prime numbers in some power. Prime number 2 in the power n2, prime number um, n, well, let's call this number x, I'll have x, uh, to the power n, n. So, there are n different prime numbers in different powers, and all together, as a product, they represent my number x. Now the question is, how many divisor, div divisors this particular number x um, has? Well, um, very simply. Um, since these are maximum powers, my, these prime numbers um, can actually be included uh, into the combi different combinations to, to, to provide uh, divisors. So, divisor is basically any combination of these, right? So, I can have P1 in different power from 0 to N1. I can have P2 from 0 to N2. So, basically, these are all the different choices which I have, which I have to make, to construct my divisor. So, P1 in any power from 0 to N1, P2 in any power from 0 to N2, etc. So if I will combine whatever I have chosen, I will have a divisor, obviously, right? Because any divisor is a combination of the same P1, P2, etc., Pn in some powers. Well, so how many choices do I have here? Well, obviously, I have n1 plus 1, right? From 0. I start from 0 and end with n1. Now, with each of them, I can have as many as n2 plus 1 choices for the second prime number, etc. And uh, this, the last one would be this. So, the product of these is actually the number of divisors. So, all I have to know to calculate the number of divisors is the initial representation of my number x as a product of prime numbers in some powers. By the way, there is a very interesting theorem in the number theory that this representation is actually unique. So if you have two different representations with two different sets of uh, prime numbers and, set, and, and different powers, that, that's actually exactly the same representation. Representation uh, as a product of prime numbers is unique. Well, so that's the answer, and that ends the session. I recommend you to go to the unisor.com again and review all these problems presented as this particular lecture uh, but just by yourself. So thanks very much, and good luck.